Welcome back. This is Part-Time Guardian. So we've seen the overview of Stasis at this point, and I know there's some more stuff coming out from Bungie, but one of the things in the upcoming release for Hunters is the abilities that they have, at least in the videos that we've seen, appear to break portions of PvP, which again isn't surprising because as we've gone into seasons where new subclasses have come in, taking King as a prime example, we typically see that. And to be honest with you, the meta could use a little freshening, so I think it's, it's actually good. In this video, I plan to break down what we know so far and how you can build a monster PvP build that will work well for this season, but will also prepare you to dominate Crucible as soon as Beyond Light drops. Because I think, you know, with the new meta, with everyone figuring out things, it's going to be a place where you can have a lot of fun. And as I do this video, I will put timestamps at different portions. So we're going to go into different sections of the build, different things about stasis, and I'll put timestamps here in a little bit. As a reminder, we're getting close to 500 subscribers. And when we get there, I will start the contest to give away the Jade Rabbit figurine from Shadowkeep. If you're interested in that, or in general, if you'd like to see more videos that I put out, feel free to subscribe to the channel and like the video. I really, really appreciate it. So again, I'll put some timestamps up here for the different portions of the build and the different parts of the video. So let's let's talk about it. So first off, Stasis. So Stasis is a, is a very exciting a portion of Beyond Light that's coming. It's a, you know, basically new subclasses. And so if you haven't seen that, um, I do have a video where I kind of break down the trailer and you can get more details there. At a high level, it appears that Bungie's really, again, getting deep into the RPG portions of the MMO that are trying to build. And what the abilities you at least see for the Hunter, and again, that's what this video is about, it builds on the already strong neutral game of the Hunter. And in general, it looks like there's a lot of new neutral, strong abilities coming in all classes. Again, you have a grenade that will slow enemies down. We don't know everything about that, but that in PvP would be a huge issue. And then there's a void wall that you can use for defensive and offensive purposes. And again, that could be really interesting in certain maps. And again, you can see that in this video. And then finally, there are melee hatchets. And the melee hatchets, again, it's similar to some of the other things we've seen, like throwing knives. But again, they kind of bounce off surfaces. So... Seems like something with some of the things we've talked about that could be really helpful, I guess, especially in PvP. So what will you need to be successful next season? Well, obviously, this is early in the PR cycle for Bungie, so we don't know everything yet, but we, we have some general ideas. Generating grenades, obviously, sooner and more often will be helpful because most of the things we talked about earlier, the slowdown and the void wall, come from grenades. Being able to generate your melee faster is also helpful because, again, that goes into a lot of the uh, hunter builds um, and uh, those hatchets look pretty cool and literally helpful with some of the things that we're talking about and again as stated before the hunter neutral game will continue to expand and so that's why you know, the hunter game neutral game is already good on void walker and that's where i'm going to base most of this build on there may be other opportunities in other subclasses and as bungie releases more information i'll put some thoughts into that and get that to you guys as soon as i can so to start out with, I have a build that we're going to talk about that should support you playing again this season, but also allow you to dominate next season by being invisible most of the match again this season and having your grenades of smoke mount available most of the match. Now again, next season, when we go to the stasis, the invisibility won't be as big of a thing, but at least in this season, it'll allow you to dominate as you're wrapping things up. So let's talk about the core of the build for this season. So we're going to start with Voidwalker Top Tree. Let me go over the abilities real quick. So with the Voidwalker, you have a Snare Bomb, which allows you to basically throw a Smoke Bomb from a distance. That's your melee ability. It sticks to surfaces and detonates when enemies are near, slowing and disorienting them. Keen Scout, which will allow you to sprint and sneak faster. And also you can get Enhanced Tracking, which allows you to track down enemies. Deadfall, which allows your Tether to last longer and reach more enemies to trap them. And then Vanishing Step, when you dodge, it makes you vanish from sight for a short period of time, which is really helpful. Now, you could build this with Bottom Tree, but most of the abilities require you to be close to enemies, and that's not always easy in PvP. Now, if you go in with some sort of strong shotgun build or something that's close up, you could do that. But again, I tend to think that's more for PvE. Also, having Snare Bomb to set traps throws off radar. So when you put that trap in a particular area, it actually shows as an enemy. So you can actually make people think you're sitting there crouching behind a corner. 
and then you can go around and flank them, so it's it's really helpful. And then Keen Scout lets you get around the map quicker and expands your ability to find enemies. And then Deadfall allows you to have your tether and have your tether last longer. So you can put it out initially to kind of protect you, but then you can kind of move around. And since it stays longer, if someone comes and tries to, you know, sneak up on them, you can lure them over there. Or if they have a super, you can actually use it to neutralize them. So again, that comes in really handy. So let's expand on top of that. And to do that, let's add Sixth Coyote. Now, Sixth Coyote people really love or hate. I know there's a ton of Hunter Exotics, a ton of opinions. But what I love about Sixth Coyote is it gives you two dodges. Which seems like something, again, that isn't all that great, but let's go over that for a minute. With max mobility, your dodge comes back in about 9 seconds. When you go invisible, it lasts for, for 5 seconds. So basically, you get your dodge back, right? That's your, that's your melee ability, okay? And then when you do it for, not, you can do it every 9 seconds, but when you do it, you get invisible for 5 seconds. So the double dodge... You basically, for the most part, with some exceptions, can stay invisible most of the map. Now I know you can other, add other exotics that extend your invisibility, but the double dodge will also build into some of the other neutral game elements that we're talking about in this build. And then on top of this, you can add traction. Traction adds sort of some back-end mobility that you won't actually see in your stats. Actually, it does add a little bit that you can see in your stats, but it also adds some other abilities that aren't as visible within the stat breakdown. So this gives you a great base to build on. So first off, it allows you to stay invisible, which can protect a hunter because hunters are a little bit squishy. It also allows you to stay mobile, which is, again, as a hunter, that's the key to your builds. Also having your melee ability frequently offers good protection in tight spots. Add to this enhanced bomber mods. So your base bomber mods actually allow you when you use your class ability, which in this case is your dodge, to get your grenade back quicker and it's 5% quicker. If you have enhanced bomber mods, that can actually give you 15% quicker. And so you can kind of see where I'm going with this build. But first off, let's talk about how you get enhanced mods. Enhanced mods get dropped from raids, higher level nightfalls and iron banners at a higher percentage. They can drop from all sorts of different areas, but this is where you're gonna have the best chance. And from Iron Banner, they actually come from packages that you turn in, and I've had a lot of success. Like, I played Iron Banner, and I typically try to play that a lot when it comes out. And I've had, over the duration of a week, I've had, you know, lots and lots of mods drop, a um, high drop rate from those packages. So again, if I were going to try to get those, if you don't have them already, that's probably the easiest way to do it, uh, personally. So in addition to some of the other things we've been talking about, you also want to try to get um, high stat armor. And high stat armor is basically armor that has, you know, something like 60, 65, or, or, or as much as possible points spread across your different abilities. And obviously you can mix and match those. You can have one ar piece of armor, maybe it's really high resilience, one that's really high mobility. But again, that's something that will really help kind of balance out the mods and things that you're doing. And now that we have a longer season, you can really grind out for those. Again, the best sources are similar to what I already talked about with enhanced mods. Playing raids, high-level nightfalls, and Iron Banner. And again, Iron Banner, I've had a lot of good luck with 65+, plus, um, even high, high 60, you know, up towards 68, 69 um, armor drops dropping. So again, I think that's a good place to do it. So again, you can kind of get both the mods and the armor in these activities. In addition, this season, with the Recaster... It allows you to take your Umbral Ingrams and get high rolls in specific specialties, whether it's Discipline, Strength, or whatever. By completely maxing out your Rate Recaster, you can buy up to five Trace Overrides each week. And with these Overrides, you can actually take your Umbrals and get these. Now, I will say, these are great. Um, they're not always the 60-plus armor. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. But in a pinch, if you need a particular piece of armor that has high, let's say, discipline or high mobility, and you only need one piece and everything else is pretty balanced out, it could be a good way to kind of balance out your build. And it's also a good place to grind because going next season, we don't really know which things will be useful. Again, we're kind of assuming here, and that's why I'm making these videos. But that's where, you know, again, it's a pretty easy because you get umbrals to drop from pretty much everything in the game. Finally, you can add demolitionist weapons to that. And so what a demolitionist weapon is, is as you get kills, you actually get grenade energy back. So it can further build on this sort of grenade piece of the build. And, and in some cases, if you use that, then maybe you could take a little bit of stuff away from discipline and go with a um, uh, build that maybe has higher resilience or strength or other things. So again, that can be helpful. The grenade portion of this build isn't as critical this season as it appears to be next. Now, don't get me wrong, it is useful. 
I like to use Void Wall in PvP to kind of trap opponents, but it's not going to be as, as useful this season. But it appears to be absolutely critical for next season with some of the abilities that we see on the grenades. Again, we'll know more as Bungie re reveals more, but that's why this is a good build to start using this season, get experience with, and then roll into next season. So now let's talk about the timings and how this works and kind of your average tier five discipline build. Again, as a reminder, discipline is the stat that allows you to get your grenade quicker. So a tier five discipline build is gonna be very average on grenade generation. So for a tier five discipline build, um, basically you get your grenade in 59 seconds. Now let's see how we can tier things on top of that. If you do basically no dodge, you know, no abilities or anything like that with dodge, again, that's gonna be 59 seconds. If you have one dodge, which this is so no mods, um, you don't have six coyote. Again, it's 59 seconds, so you're not really getting an advantage. This is where six coyote comes in really helpful. With the double enhanced bomber, so again, I'm taking the enhanced bomber, I'm putting it on twice on my character. That goes down to 33 seconds with one dodge. And what I mean by that is you don't have six coyotes, so you're gonna have to wait for your dodge to kind of come back for that class ability, right? So that goes down to 33 seconds, which is a big reduction. It's about a, that's about 50%, 56% as fast as what you had previously. So again, that, that's, that's pretty quick. Now, if you have your double enhanced bombers, plus two dodges, which again is what you give a sixth coyote, it goes to about 25 seconds. So you can see that's that's even really quicker. And what I found is as I was doing this, I can get about four dodges out um, before between the time of when I threw my first grenade and when I threw my second grenade. Then if you add double enhanced bomber with the two dodges and maybe a demolition base weapon like a, like an auto rifle, like in this example, I get down to 19 seconds. And again, some of this stuff is subjective because I might have not been timing it correctly when I hit stop on the stopwatch, but that's generally what I saw. And then finally, if you want to do the same thing, double enhanced bomber, two dodges with a de demolition grenade launcher, because the grenade launcher or something like that, you can get kills really, really quickly. You don't have as much ammo, but you know, it just depends. You could do that. I, in this case, I'm doing it on a heavy. You could find a special uh, grenade launcher that allows you to do that, right? I got down to 14 seconds, which is about 23% of the original time. So yeah, that's pretty fast. Now you can improve on top of that by getting better armor, which we talked about earlier. Here's a chart I'm gonna show on the screen on what tier one through tier 10 looks like for discipline that gets you to what the timings look like at the different tier levels. So at tier 10, it would take the timings. Again, you could see it goes to 32 seconds. But if you added all the things that I talked about with the percentages from above, you can actually get your grenade back in seven seconds by completely max out the build. Again, like I listed above. However, those timings are subjective, so you could even tweak it a little bit more. Maybe you're better at grenade launchers than I am. Maybe you're in a large group of ads where you get a grenade launcher kill, but you actually get like multiple ads with one grenade launcher. You could probably get unlimited grenades, and that's something I'll play around with. But again, that would be completely broken within the next season. So you can see where this comes in handy. The trick, though, is finding good enough armor that also balances out your stats. Again, I can easily get to tier 10 with the, with some of the armor I just had on, but again, then I'm gonna have to give up mobility and other things like that. So again, that's something you'll have to kind of play around with. So that's really it, guys. With the longer season, you have a ton of time to prepare for next season, but you wanna be prepared so you can go in and completely dominate Crucible, dominate activities, and so that's why I'm trying to give you some ideas. As we get more information from Bungie, I'll tweak these videos, maybe put updates to them. But based on what we're right now, this is probably going to be a really killer bill for next season. And I'm glad I could bring it to you. So again, if you found value out of this video, if you really appreciate it, I'd appreciate a like on the video and subscribe to my channel. As you subscribe, you can get in the community and we can talk about what type of build videos and other things you'd like to see next. And I'll see you guardians in the tower.